Wailord is a big dumb whale with the eyes of a creature that would get a migraine if a single rational thought ever entered its tiny little brain. Yet, despite its vapid appearance, this big round fish has actually been the cause of one of the biggest and bloodiest debates in the Pokemon community for the better part of 20 years. The Pokedex bills Waylord at 47 feet 7 inches long, and yet it only weighs a mere 877 pounds. For context, that's about the same size as a real world sperm whale, and yet it's over 100 times lighter. That has led many people to beg the question, is Waylord so light that it could fly away like a blimp? Well, if you do the math by calculating the volume of Waylord's in-game model using a 3D modeling software, it turns out that no. Waylord has a density of 2.2 kilograms per meter cubed, which is greater than the density of air at sea level. So no, Waylord cannot fly. But it also can't swim. Richard, hit that intro. understand why finding Waylord's density is so important when determining if something can fly or swim, we first need to understand the concept of buoyancy. Riddle me this, we all know that metal sinks. So why then can a metal boat float? Well, it has to do with displacement. Like everything, boats are constantly being affected by gravity, trying to pull them down. But when you put one in water, in order to go down, it has to push through all the water that's already there. As all my physics students know, Newton taught us that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. So while the boat is pushing down on the water, the water is pushing back up on the boat. This upward force is what we call the buoyancy force, and it turns out that it's directly proportional to the amount of water the boat displaces. As the boat sinks further and further, it displaces more and more water, which causes the buoyancy force to grow. If the buoyancy force ever grows to the point where it equals the force of gravity, then the boat will come to rest and float. The reason a metal boat is able to float while a metal block sinks is because a boat is mostly filled with air. Their hulls are designed in such a way that they can displace a large volume of water while remaining as light as possible. They maximize the buoyancy force while minimizing the effects of gravity. However, if you add more and more mass to the boat, it will sink lower and lower in the water until, well, you know the rest. <coughs> this relationship between an object's volume and its mass is called density. If you want to see this relationship mathematically, the force of gravity exerted on the boat is equal to the boat's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. The buoyancy force can be found by multiplying the density of the fluid by the acceleration due to gravity by the volume of fluid that's being displaced. If we do some simple rearranging, getting rid of those G's on both sides and moving the V over, we find the simple relation that if an object is less dense than whatever fluid it's submerged in, it will float. This holds true for any fluid, from water to lava to air. Bringing it back to Waylord, 2.2 kilograms per meter cubed is greater than the density of air, which is only 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed at sea level. In essence, Waylord is heavier than the amount of air it displaces, so it can't float away like a blimp. However, water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, a lot more dense than air, and a lot more dense than Waylord. This tells us that Waylord can float on the surface of the water no problem. 
almost too well, in fact. In the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, we see a Waylord floating with about half its body submerged under the water, up to its flippers. However, doing some quick math, Waylord should float if as much as 1% of its body is submerged in the water. Trying to get it any deeper than that is like trying to shove a beach ball underwater. Actually, actually, you know what? That's not fair. It would be five times harder than shoving a beach ball underwater. And thus, we come to the shocking truth that the Pokemon community has been blind to all these years. Waylord cannot swim. It can float and roll around on the surface of the water like an air hockey table, but if it ever wants to dive down for food, if it ever wants to use its flippers or tail to propel itself in a specific direction, that's not happening. Instead, it's doomed to an eternal existence of rolling around on the water surface, at the mercy of the fickle whims of the waves and the ocean breeze. I don't know why I made it sound so serious. I mean, it's a made up whale, I'm sure it'll be okay. And yet, surely this can't be the whole story. After all, we can clearly see that Waylord can swim. The Pokedex says it can dive 10,000 feet. It can learn the HM dive. So how is this possible? Well, the first possibility is that the Pokedex is just wrong. I mean, half the stuff in here sounds like the ravings of a madman. and. Pardon me for sounding harsh, but I don't know how much I trust the findings of a supposed Pokemon professor who looks like he's in a constant state of panic. But if we want to try and make sense of this, as it so happens, there are actually loads of animals in our real world that face this exact same problem, albeit on a much lesser scale. Lots of fish have this organ called a swim bladder. They can use some of the oxygen that their gills extract from the water to inflate this bladder, reducing their density and allowing them to float upwards. This is actually very similar to how a lot of submarines work. But Waylord is neither fish nor submarine. Well, at least I think so. So how do real world whales regulate their density? Well, this may be surprising, but we have absolutely no idea. It turns out that studying the internal biology of a whale 2,000 meters under the water is pretty hard. So we don't know exactly how real whales regulate their buoyancy when they dive, but we do have a couple of guesses. It's possible that they simply exhale air from their lungs to reduce their density to sink, similar to what well, humans do, but others believe that their low bone density allows them to dynamically regulate their buoyancy. Honestly, I wish I could tell you more, but basically every article I found on whale buoyancy was locked behind some kind of paywall. I guess those whale facts are a hot commodity or something? So it's possible that Waylord has some features similar to this, though it would need to reduce its density by a lot in order to get to the point where it could swim. The only way that I could see this happening is if Waylord completely deflates itself to dive down and then inflates when it wants to quickly float back up to the surface, almost like a puffer fish. That is kind of crazy, but this is also a world with magical fire breathing dragons and I can't really see another way in which this could be possible. But if that is true, I mean, just me, but kind of seems like the kind of thing you would put in the Pokedex birch instead of just talking about how you saw a cool one on your whale watching trip one time, you idiot. Hey everyone, thanks so much for sticking around all the way to the end of the video. I know this one was a little shorter than my usual videos. I had something else planned for this week that ended up taking way longer than I thought. So that's been pushed back to next week, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait. It'll be pretty cool. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't so you can see when that comes out. And of course, as always, this video was made possible by all my patrons, including Alakazam, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidikin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Alberung Freud and Selican. I still have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want to support the channel more directly, you can get access to all sorts of cool perks like early access, exclusive live streams, and getting to suggest and vote on video topics every month. 
Alright, now if you'll excuse me, I got a real long video to edit. <laughs>